and cooking for real we're making chocolate cream pie from scratch crust included so first things off we have one cup plus one tablespoon of all-purpose flour and I have here a half a teaspoon of salt now you know me I'm not a measurer but if you're baking you better measure so we're going to mix all of that together and then we're doing something called cutting in. This is one third of a cup of shortening, okay? And I'm gonna put the whole thing in, but then you're gonna cut it in like so. Now that that's start mixed together, I have five tablespoons of water here that I put in the freezer to get ice cold. You probably won't need to use all of it so what I'm gonna do is dribble in about a tablespoon's worth. I'm gonna just start working it in. Once you can form a dough ball with it, you usually don't want to add much more water. All right, see what I have here? Say what you will about Crisco, but I rely on it. So what we're going to do here is actually grease this pie pan lightly. Well, it should be lightly, but I seem to have smeared a little too much Crisco on here. That's an old trick I learned from my grandmother is I keep a plastic bag or a piece of uh, plastic wrap in the jar because most that I use it for is actually greasing pans. So now we're going to flour the surface that I will be rolling this pie crust out on. So here is my cold pasta dough. Just had a chance to sit and we're just going to roll it out. Keep turning it because you want it to, oh man, I don't know why they say to do it cold. It just gets so crumbly. See, now what happened here was I had followed the crackers instructions and good old Betty wants you to roll out a cold crust. Well, in rolling out a cold crust, it crumbled and fell apart. My perfectly fine crust that went in the fridge just fine, I ended up having to add water and mix it almost like it was a pasta dough. So we are back to rolling and as you can see, it's still not ideal. But it's retrievable. I was so disappointed with that crust that I went ahead and threw it away. And I'm making another one. And I'm doing it pasta style. Because I'm going to roll it immediately instead of letting it get cold. Yeah. So if we've learned anything today, it's that uh, Betty Crocker wasn't very good at making pie crusts. Now I can hear my grandmother going, you're overworking that dough. But quite frankly, <laughs> the other method didn't work all that well. Maybe it's one of those things where everybody has their way that they do it. Neither here nor there. This feels better than the other one. We're going to go ahead and make that round. You roll it into a ball, your corners, and your crease is sealed. Okay, y'all, I'm not even kidding. I just added so much water to this. This is the wettest pie crust in history, but look, it is finally rolling. I guess it's super dry in my house today or something, but uh, yeah, that was an act of pure frustration. <laughs> okay, so here's what you want. You want it to be bigger than the outside of your, of your pie plate, and it is. So here's what let's do is gently fold it in half and then in a quarters slide the plate over and then gently unfold it into the plate. You can fix cracks, it's not a big deal. 
And uh, over there I actually have the oven heating up to uh, 450, which it seems to be there already. Now, a lot of people put that fancy little scalloped edge on it, which I will try, but I'm going to be honest, it's not my thing. And you are going to poke holes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Doesn't even matter the amount. But this is the idea with the scalloped edge, is you just pinch it between your thumbs. Like I said, this isn't something I'm good at. That's more my mom. She's awesome at stuff like this. And I'm going to pop it in the oven and check on it from time to time. Sometimes it takes five minutes and sometimes it takes 15. Now we're going to check on the pie crust. You can see it's already a little bit browned. It's been three minutes. So it's been a total of seven minutes. Come on. And as you hear by the smoke detector, I have slightly overcooked my pie crust. Like I said, you can't walk away. <laughs> you just can't walk away. But um, I can live with this because it's just this little bit here. And I'll cheat and chip it off. You may have picked up on my frustration with the crust. I promise you, if I've made the crust once, I've made it a hundred times. Today just wasn't my day. So what we're doing is we're calling this one well done. Because uh, while on camera it looks pretty black, it's actually just very dark brown. So we're going to go forward and video is going to be a little on the limited side for this because my recipe's on my Kindle and I use that to shoot. This recipe calls for four egg yolks. So now what we have to do is separate these eggs. Now notice I've taken the top half of the shell off. What I'm going to do is simply roll it. Rolling, 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 ever so gently. If you feel the need to, you can transfer it between halves. You see that white just rolls right off. And once it's separated, yolk into the bowl. Now another method is the hand method. It's quicker, but as you see, more fallible. Good thing I didn't need those whites for anything, huh? There you go, four perfect yolks. Now, and that one broke as I dropped it in the bowl. No worries. What you have to do is beat these up. And then we're going to set them aside because uh, we're going over to the oven. Okay, so we're going to turn this to medium heat. And into this pan is going one and a half cups of sugar, one third cup of cornstarch, and a half a teaspoon of salt. We're going to get that all mixed together. Before I start burning sugar, we're going to start adding the milk. Three cups of milk goes into this. And we're going to add it gradually. That's one cup mixed in. Time to start on number two. The thing is, you have to get this pan hot again. The temperature's got to come up before you can add more milk. So I do it about a half a cup at a time. You can see a bit of steam rising up here. We've got to keep it moving because we're not looking to scald this milk. I have the last quarter cup of milk to go in right now. Now it's not an exact science, but I do see steam and all of the milk is in. So at this point, what we're doing is we're adding, this is two ounces of unsweetened bacon chocolate. It's really gotta be this kind, unsweetened bacon chocolate. So we're just going to stir this until that's all melted in. As you can see, we're about halfway there now. We're about three quarters of the way there now and I don't know if you can tell, but this 
concoction has actually gotten thicker and that is due to the cornstarch so it's, it's gotten to a point where you really got to keep it moving and as soon as this graininess goes away then I will know that the chocolate has all melted in it didn't take long at all that was about 10 seconds ago that I last talked to you this is pretty much mixed in now and now what we have to do is we're gonna pour about half of this into the egg yolks and we're doing that because we want the egg yolks to temper not to become scrambled eggs let me take that off the heat before I burn something I'm gonna mix that in okay and then this is going right back in I guarantee you I now have chocolate pudding on my wall so right back in the pan and let's get this all together all incorporated those eggs are going to cook right here in this hot pudding hot pudding that's not something you get to say every day and then what's going to happen here is I'm going to pour this while it's hot right into the pie shell see the pie shell yes you can see the pie shell all right now final trick before I put this in the fridge while it's hot press saran wrap right to the top and this will prevent you from getting a thick skin on your pie this has got to go in the fridge to cool for at least two hours okay so the pie has actually chilled enough and it's uh, cold to the touch which is what I was looking for and when you peel off the plastic the pudding doesn't stick so now what I have here is I chilled a bowl that goes with my mixer cream and real vanilla and sugar I am going to use these see how they're thin and wiry and I'll pour in about half of this container one good drop of vanilla And like two spoonfuls of sugar and then we're going to let this do all of the work see that perfect whipped cream here you go two pieces of pie with homemade whipped cream and watch how that just sits Stiff, thick, rich, and creamy. So thick it doesn't even want to come off the spoon. Well, thank you for joining me at Cooking for Real today, where we made our very own chocolate cream pie from scratch, and, you know, there's a little pudding left. Very good. We had a little mishap with the crust. Everybody does from time to time. But you go ahead and try it anyway, because... Today just wasn't my day on the crust. You can do it. Well, but if you don't really want to, I suppose you could just buy a Pillsbury crust and roll it out. <laughs> but I think you learned that um, chocolate pudding isn't that difficult. And whipped cream is so easy if you have a KitchenAid. Well, mine's just a standing mixer. It gets the job done, doesn't it? What a difference homemade makes. We all love chocolate pie. Well, homemade it's just something else isn't it well thanks again for joining me on cooking for real today hope you have a fantastic day don't forget to like share subscribe and leave a comment for me i'd love to hear what you have to say